material there on Earth. It is sterile and incredibly durable, but most of what it makes is only in use for a very short period of time. This is an immense issue and it would be hard to think about. So what can we do as individuals to conquer this problem? The short answer is, not much. There are over 8.3 billion tons of plastic on the planet, the majority of which has been created in the last 65 years. And it is estimated that by 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Even so, the market for some used plastics isn't declining. Plastic covers our food, our bodies, our environment, our lives. A recent scientific study shows that only the eight people tested from different countries, all of whom contain measurable amounts of microplastics in their feces. This is a growing problem, and it is gradually becoming the legacy we leave on our planet. The long answer to that question, what can we do, is different. But unlike the first choice, it does not include inaction or guilt. It includes initiative and time. As we have seen in the media, Instagram in the last few years has been flooded with hashtag stop sucking and metal straw posts. And although these posts may not look like they can affect big change, Instagram and social media have been a force for good in this circumstance. The movement has been the catalyst for Seattle becoming the first US city to ban plastic straws completely, as well as American Airlines and Starbucks also following suit due to increased customer awareness. This shows how consumers can change large corporations, and in some cases, even the law, with something as simple as an Instagram post. The people have demonstrated they are ready to make changes. I believe this movement can be used as a stepping stone for what else can be accomplished. Plastic straws may only make up 0.03% of the world's ocean's plastic waste, but small changes like these give us the incentive to search out other changes we could also make. Starbucks was an example I mentioned earlier. They have pledged to eliminate all plastic straws in their cafes by 2020 and replace them with recyclable lids. They are a massive corporation that has shown they are ready to make changes and adapt to the customer's ever-growing expectations. Although, they still have things they need to address. They are responsible for the waste of over 4 billion paper cups annually, and the last time they mentioned this immense amount of coffee cup waste was in 2011. Due to their interior, due to their interior plastic lining, most of these cannot be recycled at their many municipalities. Um, 2011 was the last time they mentioned this. They pledged that by 2015, they would change their cup to a fully recyclable one. Something has to change, and if corporations like Starbucks don't seem to have the time, we need to make some. I decided to interview Amanda Timmis, a Starbucks employee who manages a few stores in Ontario and has worked there for over 14 years to discuss the situation. She first stated that she knows Starbucks has changed their cups at least three or four times in the last five years. They have also made compostable $2 cups available that can be used 30 to 50 times and are made completely from, from compostable corn fiber. This was due to the incredible influx of questions about these and requirement for them from the customers. She also noted that at the recycling stations in store, if one thing is sorted incorrectly, the entire bag that contains that item has to be thrown into garbage. When did we reach the point that convenience trumps everything else? At what time did the solution become to throw it away rather than mend or use it? From the looks of our school's overflowing trash dumpster, you're choosing the latter option. I wondered if Starbucks, I wondered if Starbucks' situation with their inability to recycle to their full potential was similar to us farm pies. The first step was to see where we stood. In our school, on every floor, there are an average of three garbage stations. Each of them includes a power tower, a green compost bin, a refundable blue bin, and a large black bin for garbage. Before trying to solve the problem, I needed to understand it. So like any normal person would do, I went through the trash for five days. <laughs> like any, I'm not gonna lie, I got some weird looks. It was interesting to uncover what was actually inside those large black bins. It wasn't hidden anymore. It was lying in the middle of the hallway for everyone to see. I first sorted it into the categories it should have been sorted into originally. The largest was compost, and the second was simply used plastics, like styrofoam or soda cups. What do you think when you look at this? Our school has 740 people, and this makes an impact. It's a microcosm of our global impact. And as a school, that is measured in the pounds of waste we produce and our efforts to reduce it. Like 
to go on any of this. Once it is placed in that large black bin, despite the potential it held, it is the same as any other piece of trash. Our custodian also later informed me that due to the, that a power towers no longer get recycled. It was just too expensive for the school district to provide people to wash off the plastic so they could be accepted to the recycling depots. So when you see the amount of waste that should have been produced, this doesn't mean anything until you take the, until you take the two minutes to wash out your Burger Shack poutine container. No matter how small a change you think this is, it is making one. That was the waste of two trash cans. Multiply that by the 12 other bins in our school. What do we want our mark to be at the landfill? Burger Shack was a surprising culprit of waste throughout the week. Young, the Burger Shack. It's close, it's cheap, it's affordable. Checks all my boxes. The only problem is that every poutine or milkshake I get served is in disposable plastic or styrofoam. I wondered what I could do to change the situation. One way you can do this is by bringing your own bowl or cup. I talked to the Burger Shack's owner. He said he was completely fine with it. It's actually better for his business model as he doesn't have to buy as much packaging. He also said that about 50 people a day come to his shack. And if, let's say about 25 of those people are from Squamalt, and 15 of them order poutine. If all of them brought a bowl or a container, that would already eliminate a large amount of plastic from our garbage cans. Ever since before we could spell, we have been taught to reduce, reuse, recycle. But I feel as though we often forget the first and most important R, reduce. Although it is great that we are re recycling and bringing our own containers, Recycling takes energy. Reusing takes containers that cost money and the effort to try and remember them. <coughs> Reducing is free. Our first instinct should be to try and change our consumer mindset. It shouldn't be to throw things away and avoid the problem. When you throw something in the trash, it shouldn't vanish from your mind. Remember, it lives on after it's thrown away. Try to make its life as a plastic the most environmentally conscious you can. And that plastic and that metal straw you bought, no matter how small of a change that it makes, it is a step on the stairs to making a difference. We as consumers have shown that we're that we can change the marketplace, from large corporations like Starbucks to small places like Burger Shack. And with a little bit of effort, we really can make this a possibility. So please, for gosh sake, wash out your Timmy's cup. Let's make the cost of consumption a little bit more affordable. Thank you. Woo!